Sarah. <laughs> What's up, Alana? <laughs> hey, this is so cool. I haven't seen you in a couple of years, I guess. It's been a while. Yeah. It was 2019, right before the pandemic that we were we were diving. Yo. We were on a boat together. <laughs> That's insane. I mean, I can kind of do that now with, with what I do, but so many people haven't been able to do that. Man. Yeah. It's, it's so good to see you, and I'm really happy to have you here. We're just going to wait just a few seconds uh, for some more people to join in. Um, oh, and we're live now, officially. Awesome. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> So where, where are you at the moment? I'm in Atlanta right now. And I think that you are super lucky and amazing to have continued diving. I actually haven't been diving since 2019, which is horrible. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I would be so sad. Come, come, please come. The borders of yes. the Bahamas are open. Yes. You can okay. come and stay in my house. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, but I guess while we're waiting, I'll just introduce myself. Uh, my name is Alana Bellacott, and I am officially a new Patty Ambassador Diver. And I am so happy to be talking to you, Tara, um, because you currently have an amazing podcast that's come out with Nat Geo, as you're a Nat Geo Explorer, and you have a very interesting story to tell. Um, tell us a little bit more um, about your podcast. Sure. So it's a six-part narrative podcast series, and it is about me following this group of Black scuba divers who are traveling around the world, searching for and helping to document slave shipwrecks. So in the in the podcast, we talk about the ships. We talk about the people who were lost on the ships, and we talk about the people and the communities that are involved with this work of bringing up that lost history from the depths of the ocean. That is amazing. Um, and obviously this is, this, is, this is kind of how we met really uh, when you were on assignment uh, working with us with um, Diving with a Purpose, which is an amazing, amazing organization that I believe is the organization you're, you're talking about, right? It's absolutely diving with a purpose. <laughs> yes. Um, they're this incredible organization made of primarily ordinary people, um, people who are teachers, students, engineers, yoga teachers, policemen. <laughs> like it, it spans the gamut, but they're all people who are really passionate about scuba diving and they wanted to make a difference with their diving. And so they decided to commit to um, doing this work of helping to recover history, which is amazing to me. That is awesome. So how did you, I, I don't quite understand. So how did you even come to, to this Space. How did you come to, to meet Diving with a Purpose? How did you become a Nat Geo Explorer? Tell us just a little bit more about yourself and how you fell into this. Sure. I feel like I fell from a long way <laughs> into this because I was not a scuba diver. Um, it, like I love the water. I love to swim, but I hadn't really thought about scuba diving. I happened to be living in Washington, D.C., at the time. And the National uh, Museum of African American History and Culture had just opened. So this was back in 2016. And because I lived in DC, I could take my time um, going to this museum. Like when it opened, it was, a, it was a hot ticket. Like it was almost impossible to get into the museum. And I had to wait for months to be able to get a ticket. But finally I got wow. a ticket. I got a couple of tickets and I was able to go very slowly through the museum. And I ended up on the second floor, which is this tiny floor that I think most people skip uh, because there are only a couple of exhibits on it. And it's, it's a place where you can do archival research. So I happened on this floor because again, I was going very slowly <laughs> through the museum and I saw this picture of a group of primarily black women on a boat 
in wetsuits. And something about that picture just, it stopped me in my tracks. One, I hadn't seen Black women like that together on a boat, like clearly about to engage in activities. Um, so that really spoke to me. And they kind of looked like me. Like I saw myself in these women who ranged in age. Like I think now I know that the youngest person there was um, in her teens and the oldest person was probably, I, I don't know that, that top level, but I'm imagining somewhere in her fifties or sixties. So to see this broad range of people um, who again, sort of looked like me, just it captured my imagination. And then I looked to see, well, who are they and what are they doing? And it said that they were a part of this group called Diving with a Purpose and that that's what they did. They um, were committed to helping the search for and find slave shipwrecks around the world. So when I read that, I was like, are you kidding me? What? That is, that's amazing and incredible <laughs> that these people are taking on doing that work. And so then I did a little bit of research to find out who are they and really like, what is this work about? And that's when I came across some statistics that also stopped me and made me feel like, you know what, this is an amazing work and I want to be a part of it. So would you like to hear the statistics that I learned? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I learned <laughs> that there were approximately 12,000 ships that brought 12.5 million Africans to the Americas. So that's 12,000 ships that brought Africans to the Americas. And they estimate that somewhere around, or I should say as many as a thousand of those ships have wrecked. But to date, and I know that you know this because you are so involved in this work and in this mission, um, to date, less than 10 of those wrecks have been found and properly documented. And that wow. felt, right? Like that felt not okay. Starting from like, 12,000. Yes. I can't, I don't even know what 12,000 of, of anything looks like, but 12,000 <laughs> ships. Oh my. 12,000 ships and a thousand and only on. Right. Well, a thousand probably wrecked, possibly. Mm, mm. So a thousand on the ocean floor, but over the course of, you know, 400 years, you've got less than 10 that have been found. So that said to me that there's a whole missing part of history. Um, and I was just so touched by these, these people who, again, look like me, who had taken on this mission to help find those ships and help bring um, that history back into memory. Wow. Because, I mean, I guess I'll, I'll speak for myself. I don't necessarily know my full genealogy on my mother's side. Uh, my dad is, is white and English and my mom is black and Bahamian, obviously with West African roots. Um, but so many people can say, oh yeah, my grandmother is from here. My great grandmother is from here. My great, great grandmother is from here. But for a lot of people of color, especially for a lot of black people, we, we do not have that privilege. We cannot say exactly what tribe or what country in Africa our ancestry is from. And even though like there is a saying, you know, you don't really know where you're going unless you know where you've come from. Um, but a lot of us don't really know <laughs> where we're from. And so you're saying that these, that the 12,000 ships, there were a thousand that probably wrecked and we only have kind of found how many of them? 10? Less than 10. <laughs> less than 10. So yeah. just that less than 10 can add kind of closure to so many people's lives and, and understanding as to exactly, you know, where their ancestry is, is from. And also there's, like you said, a major section of history that's just being left out simply because we can't find it or we haven't found it yet. Yeah. And so it is amazing that you're able to link with this group that exactly does exactly that, that tells that story. Yeah. This is the, the other statistic that 
also, um, it really, like every time I think about it, I, I get a little emotional um, because this is a number that I didn't know. And I think it, it means something to share this number because I think most people don't know this, but approximately 1.8 million Africans died in the Middle Passage. So in the crossing from Africa to the Americas, it's 1.8 million people. It, it was not, you know, a hundred people or thousand people, which is tragic in and of itself, but 1.8 million people. And those are people whose names we'll never know. Um, people who haven't been properly grieved or mourned. There are no memorials to, or there are some efforts, but there are no worldwide, um, especially no national memorials to this huge number of people who've just been lost. So it also feels like the work of Diving with a Purpose and the work, what drew me to this work was acknowledging and honoring those lost souls and to help to bring them back, as I said earlier, back into memory so that we can, um, we can, we can look at that part of our history and begin to heal it and to begin to bring closure to what was a, a pretty, I mean, you know, you, you I don't even think I need to finish that sentence. Like that was a hard, that's a hard part of our history to face. Yeah. But this work I think begins to help us really reckon with it. Absolutely. Because it, it, it makes it real. And yeah. a lot of people will think, you know, that it really wasn't that long ago or it really wasn't that many people, but that is a huge number of, mothers, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, exactly. children even. Yes. People, so one people, of the, not slaves, people. people who had yes. names and lives exactly. and exactly. dreams and aspirations. Yes. That is wow. one of the things that we try to do in the podcast is um, to raise them from like faceless statistics, which is how I think we often – view that part of history. It's like, oh, those those slaves or those enslaved people, but they're not real to us. So we do some work around um, naming them, um, putting their names back into memory. And of course, we don't know people's individual names, uh, but we're able to pull from records uh, and to know what groups may have been involved and to begin to just just to honor that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we did, we did our training together. We did our underwater archeology span training. We became divers with a purpose together. <laughs> um, but I actually don't know, did you get to dive um, any of those shipwrecks that uh, DWP came across? So did you, did you come across any on your own? I did. So there are wrecks that they're working on and some of them are still being identified. So we don't have official confirmation on a few of them, um, but the hypothesis is super strong and the evidence seems to indicate that they are indeed those ships, but we, we don't know that for sure. But there are, there's a wreck in South Africa, um, a wreck in Costa Rica. There's work that is happening in Mozambique, in Senegal, there's work that's also happening um, off the coast of Florida, which is where you and I trained. And there's work that's happening in Alabama. So in some of these sites, the conditions are not so that I can dive. Like I, I'm still a relatively new diver and I'm still getting my skills up. I, I know that there are some amazing divers in this audience and I hope to be like you one day, <laughs> but I'm not oh, You're doing yet. great. You're doing great. I was with oh, you. Yeah. You were great. <laughs> you were great. <laughs> so there's uh, um, the, the site that's in Cape Town, South Africa, um, is it's about 50 meters from shore. So you can stand at the shore and you can see um, there's like a, 
there's a tree and a rock uh, that sort of indicates where the wreck site is. And wow. I wasn't able to dive because the water in Cape Town is super cold and I was there at the wrong time of year. And it's also very turbulent. Um, yeah, it's super dangerous there. Uh, so I stood at that site though, and I was able to imagine what it might've been like um, for the people in that cargo hold. And I was also able to to give to bear witness to a ritual, um, a ceremony that happened after the wreck. It, it happened in um, 2015. A team of historians, divers, and archaeologists dove the wreck. They identified where it came from, which is Mozambique, and they identified the ethnic group that was most likely um, in the hold. And so they brought back news of what happened to the ship, to the descendants in, um, in Mozambique. And those descendants gave a gift to the dive team and asked the dive team to go back to that site and to distribute the gift on the wreck site. Um, so I was able to stand at the site and I could feel how hard it must have been 200 plus years ago. But I also felt still like that healing energy in the air from the ritual. Um, and I felt this sense of hope and possibility that we are resurrecting this history and resurrecting these people from the depths. And that felt good. I felt a lot of pride and purpose with that. Felt a lot of agency, you know? So that, that yeah. I just want to say like this work might seem like it's really sad work, but I haven't, ex I mean, of course there are sad moments inside of it, but I've experienced way more pride, more agency, um, more purpose. And that feels really, really good. Yeah. I think, I think for me, um, when I, when we were working together, um, I, I think I got to visit maybe one or two of the sites that you mentioned. And, um, I remember kind of saying in my head, like, I found you, don't worry. I, I got you. I found you. I'm not going to forget about you. We're here. We're here to tell your story. We haven't forgot about you. And we're going to tell the entire world about you. So you just, you just hang tight. Don't, don't yeah. worry. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but a lot of it was, I can agree, very sad. And instead of hearing all of the wonderful pops and clicks and bubbling noises that we love to hear underwater when we're diving, um, I heard the, the opposite. I heard um, mm. wailing and sighing mm. and the conditions mm. and what it might have been like to be mm. um, on board as a, as a captive, not as, mm. you know, something that you've agreed to as, as a captive on mm. a ship. Yeah. And I, I don't hold, I guess I can't fathom that because whenever I'm on a boat, I'm excited, you know, I'm going diving, I'm going in the ocean, but this is just a feeling of, I, I, I can't even fathom what they what they must have felt and i know that the the pain and the hurt and the sadness that i might have felt just very witness to it kind of like, mm. like you said um it's just a fraction of the the pain and the hurt that still needs to be healed um within mm. the people of color and, and black communities yeah um yeah. and so i understand that this work is is super important and telling these stories is super important why why do you think it's so important to continue to find these shipwrecks and to continue to dive them why do we have to find them as soon as possible i think about the fact that when i was growing up i learned the name of the mayflower like i know the ship that brought the pilgrims to America, but I didn't know a name of a single one of these ships. And again, these ships brought 12.5 million people to the Americas. Like that's, that's mind boggling to me. And I think that that is history worth knowing. Um, I think it makes a difference to know those stories. Like you said earlier, um, most African-Americans in particular can't trace back their history. And it's because we hit what genealogists call the 1870 brick wall. And it just means that 
before 1870, the U.S. Census did not track identifying details of those who were enslaved. Um, and after 1870, they did. So many families are able to trace back um, to around 1870. But after that, there's nothing. And I think your point about knowing where you come from and whose you come from, it actually makes a difference in how you see yourself um, and how you hold yourself in the world. There's a reason why Ancestry.com and 23andMe and all of these DNA um, sites and kits are so popular. So I think, yeah, African-Americans, people of the African diaspora, around the world, people in the Caribbean, people in South America, like having access to this information is really important to us having strength and confidence and pride in who we are. And what we find out is that our ancestors weren't just victims or they weren't slaves, like they were full right. humans full of courage and resilience and strength, but we don't know those stories. Do you know, one of the things I learned, Alana, is how many rebellions there were on these ships and how many of those rebellions were often led by women. Like that is not something that I ever knew, but because the folks would not suspect the women, the women were often leading them. Like, what does that uh -huh. didn't do to me to <laughs> learn that information? <laughs> I mean, it does make sense because um, a lot of um, uh, tribes and communities in Africa, there are matriarchs, it's the women who kind of lead these communities. And um, I think it's safe to say that for a lot of communities in the Caribbean and kind of the culture in the Caribbean is the same. It's like, yes, there may be men in government, but really though, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's the women running the show. <laughs> um, That's funny. And then one thing I, I learned that I guess it didn't really occur to me, like, yes, it absolutely makes sense, but I guess I never really thought about it. Something I learned from DWP, Stepping with the Purpose, um, is that we need to find these ships as, as soon as possible, because even though they're probably in cooler water where they're degrading slower, they're still being degraded and storms come through, hurricanes come through. Um, bottom trawlers come through, you know, those, um, uh, the fishing method that use these massive doors that scrape uh, the bottom of the sleep, the sea floor, all of these shipwrecks and all of our history, they are vulnerable to all of these instances and they can be wiped away, crushed, destroyed, buried for years. And we might not be able to ever um, learn the complete picture of our history if we don't make a point to try and find these ships sooner. And, um, Help that's tell such that a story. great point. That is such a great point. And there's more deep sea mining that is beginning to happen. So it, it there there is a danger of this history just disappearing um, if we don't do more to find it. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you said earlier, yeah. like you know, you saw these women who I'm sure look absolutely cool <laughs> in, in their wetsuits, and they they looked like you. What did that feel like? How, what does it feel? Because you're a black diver. How does it feel to, to be a black diver and to now be one of those women? Because first you were just looking at them and now you're a part of their team. How does that feel? It's, it's incredible. Um, it reminds me of the conversation that we had, um, if you remember, at DWP, Diving with a Purpose. Um, <laughs> we brought all the women divers together um, at a table and I remember, and you have to tell me what you thought, because what I remember is I, I maybe, so I think out of the group, maybe there were like 20 to 25 divers overall, maybe 30 max. Mm -hmm. And I think that we were about 10 women. My, my numbers might be off, but, but somewhere around there. That feels right. That feels right. Okay. And what I remember is, you all, because I was I was in interview mode, but you all said that you hadn't been at a table together. And it, it was divers. It was also archaeologists. It was dive professionals. Um, it was people like me who are just 
you know, diving, learning how to dive. Um, and there was such a feeling of camaraderie, of beauty. I remember there were tears <laughs> um, oh. that day. Do you remember My bad. this? <laughs> yes. All of us, all of us definitely had a go at it because we were all so passionate in what we were doing and so passionate about where we had come from and what we were up to and so bonded by this experience that we were all having just looking for our family looking for other people's family um that was definitely i remember that talk that was a, a super strong talk <laughs> but it was it was great and there were so many hugs afterwards and i'm so many hugs. i'm pretty sure we all follow each other on instagram or <laughs> in one way or another we follow each other and keep up with each other on social media can I turn um, the question back to you and just ask you, like, what is it, what does it mean to you to be a black diver? Um, I guess, don't you feel like some sort of unicorn <laughs> in a way? <laughs> like, uh, isn't there this ridiculous stereotype that black people can't swim? That is ridiculous. so, so ridiculous and so false. And so literally I've had, uh, a direct message, a DM in my Instagram saying, I didn't know black people can swim. And I've never seen a black diver before. Like, how did you come to learn to do this? And I'm just like, yo, Patty, okay? There are courses you can take online. You can go to a Patty Center. Anyone can learn to dive. The ocean is for is for everyone. It doesn't really matter your, your ethnicity, where you come from, your intersectionality. You know, anyone can can learn to dive. But for me, I think it's the same feeling that you had when you looked up at the photo of, of those women from Diving with a Purpose. I want to be able to give that same feeling that you had to all women across the world that, look, you can do this too. See, I'm doing it. Look at my hair. You don't know what to do with your hair in the water? Come, I'll show you. I'll tell you what conditioner to use. I'll tell you how to put it away. Oh, uh, you have questions about changing on a boat? Don't worry, I got you. Um, and there's just so much that I want to, to get to, to women of color, to people of color, to black people around the world. Um, and one of the main things is that, you know, if, if this is your passion and you wanna do something, you just go ahead and do it. No one, no, no one can stop you and can separate you from, from your passion. And that is, if, if I can do it, if you can do it, Tara, we, anyone can do it. Anyone can do it. One of the things that's really, I think that's interesting about the podcast, um, which is called Into the Depths, and it's uh, it's coming out, uh, it's, the six episodes are coming out weekly through March 3rd. So the second episode just dropped today. Um, but in the fourth episode, we tell this incredible story that I did not know about the history of black aquatic culture, which dates back to the 1400s. Did you know, Alana, that there is so much evidence that we were expert divers and swimmers and canoe makers and fishermen in West Africa in as early as the 1400s and probably before then. But we were so expert that people um, used to hire Africans to salvage ships from back in the day. So this myth like that we don't swim is not true. Oh, like we this. were expert <laughs> swimmers, right? Like, Yes, that makes absolute sense. If you're a people of the ocean, if you're surrounded by the ocean, that's where the majority of your food is going to come from. Exactly. So of course, you have to be some, there must be some group in your, in your tribe, in your community that are expert fishermen, watermen, yes. water yes. women. Yes. So yes. I have no idea where that came from. Fun that. <laughs> we're, we're never going to talk about that ever again. That's foolishness. <laughs> oh, man. This is so great to catch up with you. But Fantastic. I know some people are just kind of trickling in. So please remind us what Into the Depth is about and tell us where, how can we listen to it? Sure. So Into the Depths, it's a six-part narrative podcast series. It's available on all the platforms, wherever you get your podcasts. And in it, it's a, it's a journey as I follow a group of Black scuba divers around the world as they search for slave shipwrecks. 
And one of the questions, well, there are three questions that I am trying to unravel throughout the series. Um, one is, why does this history matter? So that's a question that we are examining. Two is, does it matter who finds this history and who tells the story? So that's the second one. And then the third one is a much more personal um, question. And I wonder if this search for this history can help me as a Black American woman feel a sense of belonging and home in this world. So the podcast is super personal um, and it follows my transformation as I, as I try to answer that question over those six episodes. That's awesome. I am really, really looking forward to, to listening. I caught uh, a small snippet, snippet sorry, of, of the first episode, but I'm definitely going to listen in because I miss you so much and you're so great to work with. You're going to hear <laughs> all kinds of, I, I was just going to say, you're going to hear all kinds of familiar voices that are going to take you back. You're going to be like, Aww. I know that voice. I know that voice. <laughs> Awesome. So sweet. Um, well, I guess we can check out the comments. Oh, we've got people from Egypt. Hey, everybody. Tahiti. Oh, hi, Greg. <laughs> um, we have someone who's a little, I guess, surprised that I got a question. What's it like being a black diver? Yes, that is an actual question <laughs> I've gotten before. Um, but sometimes, you know, it's there are there is actual answer uh, to that question um because diving um for a while was kind of only exclusive to military because you know it is it can be dangerous uh diving underwater and so it was kind of um back in the day just reserved for for military ops um and then because of organizations like patty um kind of brought it to the world and made diving available to everyone but still, it was an expensive sport and not a lot of inner city or urban communities have access to the ocean, let alone scuba diving. And so, yes, there's definitely there are definitely less um, divers of color or are black divers. And you can absolutely feel that when you step on a boat and you're the only person who can't fit a hood over their heads because they've got too much hair. <laughs> No joke, my hood size is extra large and it is a huge joke wherever I go <laughs> diving because I can't lend my hood to anybody else. I do squash this down a, a whole lot, but there, there are some things you just don't really think about um, uh, that, uh, yeah, like needing an extra large size hood because he's got amazing curly hair that defies gravity. It grows upward, <laughs> not, not, not downward. <laughs> And what's amazing that maybe people don't know is though now there are a nice number of black scuba divers. Um, there's an association, the National Association of Black Scuba Divers, there are, which has over 2,000 members. There are dive clubs in most major cities. Um, so we're growing the ranks, which is super exciting. <laughs> That's why it's so important to be able to to see yourself like you seeing yourself in those women basically jump started this section of your career. It jump started you getting to know yourself just by seeing other black scuba divers. It's That's opened true. up this massive chapter that is I guess I won't speak for you, but that is bringing you home and helping you understand where, where you've come from. And now you can tell that to your children and they can continue to tell that story about their history. And so just by being in a photo, which is why I guess I really wanted to be a Patty ambassador diver is because I wanted to be that reflection. I wanna be able to, to jumpstart someone's passion for the ocean, or I wanted to be able to, to jumpstart someone's uh, desire to, to try scuba diving. I so, love it. So you will Ooh. be inspiring the next generation. That's awesome. Okay. <laughs> a question for you from Greg. Uh, what's the most fascinating discovery that you've made while engaging uh, in one of these specific dives? So I will just say two notes here that one, um, finding a slave ship wreck is not easy, um, super hard. And it's because most of the ships were built in the 16, 1700s, and so they were built out of wood. So when they mm -hmm. wreck, 
um, you know, they, they splinter and those pieces fall to the ocean floor and of, of course are covered in coral, made into homes by marine life, covered by sand. So they're, they're really hard to find. Um, and I say that to say that there are one, two, three, four, it's like there are four active missions that are, go five active missions that are happening now. And those missions have been going on for a while. So when I started to follow the group, most of the discoveries were in place already. So I will say that I have not discovered anything new on my own, but I was able to dive on a few of the wreck sites. So I, I dove in Costa Rica, where there are two ships um, that they think are Danish uh, slave ships from the early 1700s. And I do remember what it was like to dive and to see the anchor that is associated with that ship. Um, mm. I didn't find it, but I was able to uh, witness it. And it felt really special to know that 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 piece of history that I could see, you know, came from so far back and it was a part of the story of the Africans that were, um, that were on that ship. So that was, that was an amazing experience. And Alana, have you, you've had a chance to dive um, in a couple of these sites as well. Haven't you? Yes. yes. Um, I guess the, um, like you said, a lot of them, or I guess a few of them, I, I could not dive because I'm not a, I'm not a technical diver. Um, and so I wasn't able to go to the, to the depths that some of these ships were at. Um, but on one of the ships that we were looking to discover, um, sorry, that, that we were exploring, um, we had found a pile of manilas and, um, a manila was um, a, an African currency, mainly for trading uh, slaves or, or African goods. Um, and they look like small bracelets. Um, and it's a telltale sign that whatever ship they're, they're next to, or kind of whenever you find them, there must have been um, trading of African goods going on, and most likely uh, trading of, of people, slaves because um, they were African captives at the time, not slaves. They're not slaves until they're sold into slavery. That's very important to know. <laughs> um, and we were also looking for other artifacts that can kind of link this ship um, to, to Africa and the slave trade, because when you're trading slaves, you're probably also trading goods um, like ivory and um, uh, other uh, expensive minerals. And so we actually found an elephant tusk and brought it up from the deep dark ocean mm -hmm. and seeing this massive elephant tusk that was still super dramatic, very intact, still very white. You can absolutely tell it was an elephant tusk and then holding a manila in my hand, which was iron. And that tusk was worth more than a hundred human lives and that they treated this with with care they probably had the the african captives drag this from wherever it came from onto the ship and they probably coddled and protected this this elephant tusk while you know the actual lives that were on board were probably stuffed in a, in a cargo hold with little to no air and and very poor conditions um so it was an amazing discovery but at the same time it it was very painful uh to witness and um, it, it was a, a tender moment when when we found it. Um, all of us were were in tears, but at the same time, we were able to actually say that, yes, the, the ship was a slaver. And then from there, we can figure out exactly what part of, of Africa that elephant tusk came from, which can then tell us what part of Africa the African captives on board might have come from. So kind of like you were saying, this domino effect of, of finding out our, our history and being able to tell those stories is is very, very, very important. Okay. Um, well, tell us one more time. What is your podcast? How can we listen to it? And then we're going to say goodbye to everybody. <laughs> <laughs>
Sure. The name of the podcast is Into the Depths. It is, again, it's a six-part narrative podcast um, that follows my journey uh, as I travel with a group of Black scuba divers searching for and helping to document slave shipwrecks around the world. And it is available on all um, podcast platforms. So Apple, Spotify, Amazon Music, wherever you get your podcasts, you can listen. I hope you tune in. I'm sure they will. I know I'm going to. <laughs> I'm going to listen to it while I eat Yay. my food. <laughs> it's lunchtime. <laughs> well, Tara, it's, it's so awesome uh, catching up with you. It was so good to see you. Um, everyone, Tara Roberts, she's a Nat Geo Explorer. You heard her. Into the depths. Please check it out. And um, I hope you all have an amazing day and happy Black History Month. Thanks, Alana. It was great to see you. You're welcome. Love you to see you too. <laughs> Bye. Bye.